Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Worship at United, and so glad you're here, and glad the folks online were able to join us as well. Thanks for participating in this service. Um, worship folder should have been online, as it is in front of you here. Just a few things going on today, and um, uh, f first of all, uh, today we are doing God's work, our hands. So we have sort of an abbreviated service. Still have communion, we'll, we'll, it'll probably be about 45 minutes long. And then if you're able to stick around afterwards to help with some, some work, we're putting some kits together, we're going to do some outdoor work, you're welcome to. And then we'll have, uh, end our time at Emmaus, joining them um, at noon um, for, a pot, not a potluck, just come and, and bring your appetites and we'll, we'll enjoy the time together. Special welcome to visitors that are with us today. Hopefully you can just follow along in the worship bulletin that you received as you came in. If you have any questions, elbow somebody next to you and say what's going on and they should hopefully be friendly Lutherans and, and help you along the way. Um, uh, cough, just a, a reminder of a few things that happened during the week. Uh, we have coffee time at 10 o'clock for anybody that just wishes to stop in and have a little fellowship time and chat with whatever staff happens to be around that day. And so, no, that happens every Tuesday at 10. Um, this Thursday, we are starting a women's Bible study, um, and, it, and Friday is men's Bible study. Both of those are at 8.30, and if you identify as gender diverse, you may go to either one, whichever one uh, you feel comfortable attending. And also, then a week from Wednesday, we will start our meal program, um, and we'll have more information on that next week but I don't want to confuse you too much. It doesn't start this Wednesday. So, Forum does start next Sunday. We are going to do a series called Making Sense of the Cross using some material from David Loos, who has been president of some seminaries, was a preaching professor at Luther Seminary for a while, and now is working in a large congregation in Minneapolis. He does a real nice job with this study, and it will lead us into some good conversation. So come attend that and, and know that is happening. And finally, yes. Not finally. Not finally. Grand finale. Can you use that microphone? Yeah. Oh, hello. Uh, so the landscaping crew, if you're going to participate in that, we're going to really focus on the north side of the church, this side, and the playground area. We have playground chips and plants and things. So uh, just meet out there. All right. Just so meet meet on the north side. And if you don't know where the north side is, it's it's right behind me here. So. And just. Um, Crystal sent out a link for people to sign up to set up coffee and cookies and stuff like that for Sunday fellowship hour after church. And we just wanted to make an announcement that it's really easy to do. Everything is very organized. And Christine did a great job labeling where everything is in the kitchen now. It's really easy to do. Crystal's going to send that link out one more time, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe. And um, just, you know, if, if you feel so called, Sign up to help out with coffee and cookies because coffee and cookies are wicked important. Okay. Um, I actually have two more announcements. Uh, the one that I for forgot to say is uh, we are actively looking uh, for a child care provider um, and we'll hopefully have one in place in a week or two um, for those who wish to use a nursery. But always know children are always welcome in worship here and we're excited to have so many today. So that's, that's fabulous. Finally, I do want to say I'm saddened to announce that Dale Rettman died on Friday. And um, son John and daughter Connie are here today with us, and thanks for worshiping with us. Services, I believe, will be 10 o'clock on Saturday the 24th, and there will be a graveside at 2 o'clock on that same day. So our prayers go with the Rettman family, and uh, glad you're with us today. Any other? Yes, Eunice. All right. Perfect. All right. 
So that's Eunice. Eunice said she's going to be working down in the library and uh, um, check it out if you haven't in a while. There's some wonderful books down there. Also, if you think our library needs a certain book, talk to Eunice and she'll tell you if we have the money for that particular book. So, yes. We're, whenever the church office is open is when the library is open. Yep, yep, yep. So if you come for coffee time, know that you can check it out there because that's where we meet. So. So, again, our service is a little abbreviated today, um, but we will have fun doing it. So, um, please stand as we begin our worship with our opening hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And now we be with you. Together, let us pray. Oh God, oh God overflowing. At this time, um, Crystal's going to come up, and also we want to invite any children. If you brought your backpacks, bring those up. If you didn't bring your backpacks, just come up anyway. So come on up. Come on up, kiddos. Good morning, Thatcher. Oh, that's okay. Are we standing or sitting? Yeah, let's, let's sit okay, if that's okay. Let's sit. Let's everybody have a seat, and thanks for coming on up. Oh. Come on up. I do have so. something to give each of you, so if you want to come up, so. you can get it. Come on, and, and go ahead and have a seat. You can sit, sit right down here. right sit here. Back. Perfect, and there so glad go. you're Good up morning, here. Good morning, Cormac. So today we are doing something called the blessing of the backpacks. What's a blessing? Does anybody have an idea what a blessing is? Bless what do you, you. think is a blessing? Yeah. 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 So it, the, the answer that was given is somebody that's, that's loved by God and we bestow and talk about that love of God over. Yeah. What else is a blessing? Like a procession, in some ways there can be blessings that are like a procession. What else? Like a <laughs> when it's white, we light that one. Well, It's kind of like when you get baptized. So we mark. Sometimes we lay hands on people. It's a blessing to say, to remind us that God is looking over you. And that doesn't just happen in church. Sometimes we do blessings of different things. And today we want to bless backpacks to tell you that God is going to be with you. 
whether you are in preschool, whether you are going to school, whether you are a teacher, we are doing a blessing. In a little minute, in a minute, we'll have you all stand up and, and we'll do, do a blessing together. I'm going to hand it over to you. Perfect. So sometimes when we do a blessing, there, did you know there's a lot of blessings in the Bible? And often when you get a, do a blessing, you get something to remember it. Maybe in the Bible they'd make an altar or something like that. We're going to give you something to help remember that you are important, you are loved, you are blessed all school year long. So do we, we want to give them now? Is that our thought? Yes. Okay. All right. So I have two things for you here. I want to start on that side with those, and I'll start on this I side. I will. All right. So what we, Pastor Eric has is something that you can put on your backpack or your bag that you take when you travel or something like that, and it says, peace be upon you. And peace just means be calm, be still, know that you are important and loved. And then the other thing I have, Juniper, do you want to read that out loud for me? are one smart cookie. So point to yourself, point to yourself, and say, I am smart, I am loved. So we have some smart cookies for the cookies that are sitting in front of me. So you're going to take those too. You're allergic? We'll check in and make sure that if you're allergic to that, we'll, we'll figure that one out. OK, sweet girl? Okay, well, we'll figure it out. Can we pass those to our two friends back there? Oh, didn't see those two back there. Excuse me. There we go. And we'll figure it out. Okay, sweet girl? So. I'm sorry, I didn't want, see you. Do you want to hold on to it or do you want to? Okay, you hold on to it and we'll figure it out. Yes, yes. When you're going to take the cookies to your seat and you're going to wait for mom and dad to say that it's an acceptable time to eat them. Because right now might not be that acceptable time at 9.30. All right. Can you put your hands together or put your hands wherever you want to put them for prayer? I'm working on it. I'm working on it, Thatcher. Thatcher, how many more do I need over there? I got Pokemon. I'm so glad I made so many. Who knew? <laughs> Ready? All right. Prayer time. You're going to repeat after me. Ready? And just the children today. There's enough of them. Yeah. Dear God, please protect my backpack and me. Thatcher. Thatcher. Thatcher, join me in, please. Ready? Please protect my backpack and me. Help me remember my books. My locker combination. Homework assignments, Homework assignments and to treat others as I would like to be treated. Keep me and my backpack safe while I learn as I grow in knowledge. Teach me also about you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. And now, can I get you all to stand, but don't go back yet. And could I get any educators that are in our congregation to stand as well right now? And we are going to say one more prayer, but this one you don't have to repeat after me. Thatcher. 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 Look at me, okay? You gotta be quiet right now. Eternal God, parent of our Lord Jesus Christ, our great teacher and savior, bless these, your servants, as they begin the school year. Your son was once himself a child, learning and teaching in the temple. Grant that all who enter places of learning as students and educators this year be filled with your grace and heavenly wisdom. And glory. Amen. 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 And can you all say a big, big amen with me? 
Amen. Okay, thank you for coming up, and please return to your seats. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 15th chapter. I am grateful to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has... This is... This is not the Gospel that is Luke. So, do we have a Bible sitting in the sanctuary here? <laughs> I did not catch that. It was not written correctly. Here, I got it. <laughs> yep. All right, let's try this again. Now, all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the gospel of the Lord. Today, Jesus tells a story about the reclamation of lost things and the celebration that happens when that which has been lost is brought back to its proper place. A wandering sheep and a devoted shepherd, a lost coin and a determined woman who, upon finding the coin, throws a party, spending more money than the lost coin was worth. But isn't that the way things work? It feels that good to find something that you have desperately lost, and when you find it, the joy is great. I know this feeling well. Now, if you want to make Pastor Eric angry, there are two things you can do. 
One is you can drive ahead of him 10 miles an hour under the speed limit. <laughs> Two, you can make it appear that I've lost something. Though I must say I don't really need your help when it comes to that. I can lose things just fine all on my own. If you watch me on a Sunday morning, I will lose this folder at least three times because I place it down, start talking, wander away, and then forget where I've laid it. I've had the experience of losing keys, wallets, yes, coats, my sermon, that other sock which the washer or dryer must have digested by now. The list could go on. But you get the idea. I remember several years ago listening to a comedian who was sure that there was a special place that collected all of those lost things in the world, a special room in that place where all the missing single socks, gloves, mittens that we fail to find a match for when we desperately need them. All are missing stuff. So those of you who have problems with losing things maybe can occasionally relate to this feeling that all our lost stuff must be collected somewhere. And when something is found, it clears some room in this place for lost stuff so that something else can be lost. And when something is found, though, that feeling just takes us to another place. Well, the difference in our parable of the lost sheep is the shepherd searches for the lost one while seemingly risking the other 99. Our parable shows us that Jesus is that intent on looking for the lost. Would you risk the 99 for the one? I suppose it depends who that one is. Now there are times, there are times when we are the lost. When we are the ones who feel separated from the rest of the world. When our sin or our problems separate us from other loved ones and God. There are times when we feel like we are in a lost room hoping to be found. The reality we have as Christians is that we are all lost. And then, of course, I can turn it all around and say we are also all found. Jesus came to save the lost. The lost sheep, lost coins, lost brothers, lost prostitutes, lost weaklings, lost souls, lost tax collectors, all of the lost. Jesus came all of this way looking for them. And those we have given up on or forgotten about or dismissed because of their unworthiness are the very ones that Jesus has headed out to look for. And Jesus looks back over his shoulder to see if we are following him. What about you? What about me? Do we search for the lost? Do we realize that we are part of the lost? In our gospel today, we hear the Pharisee and scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. Didn't Jesus know that who one eats with says a lot about who one is? Of course he did. Today we learn that God is a seeker who pursues us relentlessly with justice and love. Jesus is a lover who woos and courts our favor. Jesus is a rescuer who suffers and dies to save us from ourselves. Jesus is a servant who rolls up his sleeves and waits tables at the heavenly banquet for us. You see, God has the audacity to be all of these things. 
God is the one who knows exactly where to find us if we can only open ourselves to be found. What the Pharisees failed to recognize is what they had in common with the sinners and the tax collectors. They failed to recognize that they were the sinners, that they were part of the lost. Of course, the message that we as Lutherans push is that we are all part of the lost, and we are all part of the found. Jesus came to save father, mother, teacher, lawyer, football player, cheerleader, Jesus came to give us life and to give us purpose. We often use the word grace around here. The incredible message of grace is that you, however you are lost, are accepted as well. Despite anything you are or have done or have failed to do, you are accepted in and through Jesus. That which is greater than you enfolds you. Do not try now to do anything at this moment. Perhaps later, you will do much. But right now, take a moment to rest in the knowledge that you are accepted for all of who you are. Let the eternal moment of grace sink in upon your troubled heart. You are loved. You are cradled in everlasting arms. You are swallowed up and your life is hidden in Christ, and that is grace. As we do the work today of being the hands of Christ, remember what happens when the lost sheep is found. We see that joy is contagious. The 99 sheep have an excuse to throw a party, which is what we have come together to do every week here at United. Come, eat at the table. It is a banquet prepared for you. Jesus has room for all of the lost. And as we are told in our Bible, Jesus has gone to prepare a place for you. For you, the lost, you are found. And for that we say, thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Will you please stand as we sing our hymn of the day.
trusting God at work and among us, we raise our hearts and voices in prayer for the needs of the world. For your voice in the church, we give thanks. Plant and tend relationships among faith communities that in faith, both listening, speech, and action, our hands work to bear fruit for the sake of all in need. God of grace, we pray. Hear us when we call. For your work in creation, we give thanks. Sustain peoples and places affected by climate change, ecological devastation, and national disasters. Prosper the work of creation care ministries locally and globally, that with our minds and hearts opened, our hands work to lovingly care for the earth. God of life, we pray. Hear us and we For your work among the nations, we give thanks. Direct leaders in paths of honest service, that both their words and actions are carried out on behalf of those whom they serve. As we remember those who lost their lives on 9-11, help us discover peace between all people. God of righteousness, we pray. Hear us when we call. For your work in places of need, we give thanks. Sustain all who are wearied by unemployment, underemployment, lack of adequate food or housing, that we advocate for the relief and just policy. Bring healing to all who are sick through the skillful hands and compassionate hearts of physicians, nurses, therapists, and caregivers. We pray for Pastor Temba, Michael, Katrina, Juniper, and we pray for the family of Dale. Of Dale. Those suffering, we pray for those suffering from depression and anxiety, Lowell, Bill, and those dealing with COVID. God of restoration, we pray. For what else do the people of God pray? Please pay, pray for peace for my friend Pam in her final days. We pray for peace for Pam in her final days. For Sabrina, who suffered a ruptured brain aneurysm this past week and is in critical care. For Sabrina, who is in critical care after a, a rupture. For Melinda's dad, who has Alzheimer's. For the people of Oak Ridge. For firefighters. For firefighters. God of restoration, we pray. Hear us when we call. For your work in our neighborhoods, towns, and cities, we give thanks. Guide our common life together so that children, youth, and adults of all ages flourish. Teach us to listen attentively to our neighbors, that, they, that any new endeavors consider those who may be left out or underserved. God of wisdom, we pray. Hear us when we call. For your work in this worshiping community, we give thanks. Bless the service projects of this day and throughout the year. Foster deeper connections among those who serve and the spirit of, of, of accompaniment as we work alongside, as we work alongside those in our community. Strengthen our faith that we trust God moving in and among us. God of love, we pray. Today we give thanks for those celebrating their baptismal anniversaries this week. Eric, Cynthia, Sandy, Katie, Charlotte, John, and Shirlene. We have much to be thankful for. For what else do the people of God give thanks? For the children of United and all the children in our lives. For the children of United and all the children in our lives. For learning lessons of life. For learning lessons of life. For first responders, all those who serve in the military and their families. For new school supplies. For new school supplies. For the life and service and example of Queen Elizabeth. 
for the life and service and examples of Queen Elizabeth. God of heaven and earth, hear us when we fall. Receive these and all our prayers, gracious God. We pray, pray in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of Jesus be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of that peace, peace one with another. Be with you. Because I've had you standing for a while, I'm going to invite you to stay seated now for the next portion of our service. Gracious God, in your great love, you're, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his <laughs> glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Jesus, in the night in which he is betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for them all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, Our Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your will be done. Uh -huh. We forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we commune this day, we'll have two stations set up. Know that uh, the grape juice is in the light color in the center of the tray, and the wine is around that. We have gluten-free wafers available also for those who need it. All are welcome to commune here at United Lutheran. And for those online, I want to start by saying the body of Christ is given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And for all who are feeling lost in any way, know at this table Jesus claims to you that you are found. Servers first up front. Yes, so if you yes. Can, you yep. Follow with the wine okay. first. God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. steps that way. Yep, just to spread out a bit. Spread out a bit. This is the body of Christ given for you.
Okay. Body of Christ broken for you. Amen. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood, may it strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace with Christ beside you. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Good to see you guys. Good to see you guys.